sa simula sa langit ng buka, may ginagam tulad ang sa paglaya ni Namaha, ang kisag ng wakaw at buitan ng paglalang minigi, ang itubig at araw ng kailan pa may magbibigi, lupa ng araw. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another PIVAO virtual commemoration, the 77th anniversary of the retaking of the Corridor Island that marked the redemption of the American and Filipino surrender on May 6, 1942. To commence, we have the PIVAO administrator under Secretary Ernesto G. Carolina for his message. A pleasant morning to everyone. I'm honored to join you in today's uh, commemoration of a sig significant episode of World War II in the Pacific. May I greet the Secretary of uh, Tourism, Secretary Bernadette Romulo Puyat, the Chief Operating Officer of uh, TIESA, former uh, Pampanga Governor uh, Mark uh, Lapid, the President of uh, the Phil American Endowment, uh, Memorial Endowment, uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Artemio Matibag, of course the National Commander of uh, the Defenders of Bataan and uh, Corregidor, Mr. Rafael Estrada, and our revered veterans, their surviving uh, spouses and uh, sons and daughters, friends, ladies and gentlemen. Today marks the 77th anniversary of the retaking of Corridor Island. Three years before, on May 6, 1942, the Allied forces were uh, humbled when Corridor fell and nearly 12,000 Filipino and American soldiers were taken as prisoners of war. Notably, before that fall, Corridor was the seat of the government of the Philippine Commonwealth under then President Manuel L. Quezon and uh, the general headquarters of General Douglas MacArthur. It was the last bastion of the resistance against the invasion forces. And as long as uh, the Corregidor held fast against the incessant attacks and artillery barrages of the enemy. The fighting spirit of the Filipino fighters elsewhere in the country could not be broken. And the resistance movement intensified. The battle to recapture Corregidor occurred on February 16 to um, 26, 1945, about the same time but the final phase of the battle for Manila was being fought during the liberation campaign. In mid-February 1945, two regimental combat teams, or RCT, the 1st RCT and the 151st RCT, secured the southern half of uh, the Bataan Peninsula with the help of Filipino guerrillas. Then, amphibious assaults on uh, Corregidor began on February 16, led by the 3rd Battalion of the U.S. 34th Infantry Division. On the same day, planes carrying the 5 authored Parachute Infantry Regiment, led by Colonel George Jones, mounted at Mindoro, dropped combat paratroopers at the top side area of uh, Corregidor, starting at uh, 8.30 in the morning. And this was the great surprise and what proved eventually to be the big difference. At the end of uh, the day, 
the airborne force had captured the, uh, the topside area and uh, the amphibious force, for its part, had seized Marinta Hill. Ten days of intense infighting followed. By February 27, organized resistance on Corregidor had ceased. The use of the airborne troops proved effective as the Japanese, noting the obvious difficulties and hazards of dropping paratroopers uh, on the island, never expected such a daring attack. The combined shore-to-shore and airborne assaults caught the defenders by surprise, and the island fell quickly. Significantly, the retaking of uh, Corregidor accelerated the pace of uh, the victorious march of the Allies in the Philippines and the return of the Philippine Commonwealth government. For as long as the invasion force controlled the island, Allied ships were uh, at the mercy of enemy guns strategically positioned in the island uh, fortress and could not enter Manila. The recapture of Corregidor, therefore, was a day of uh, vindication for the Allied forces and for the Philippine government, whose authority was uh, thus symbolically restored. The recapture of the island cleared the, the Manila Bay area and finally opened the ports of Manila to the world. We commemorate the recapture not to uh, reopen old wounds caused, uh, caused by the war, but to point out the folly of war and stress how much more nations can benefit if they work together, help each other, and together promote peace and progress. Because of the uh, heroic sacrifices and uh, noble deeds of the Allied forces, with the assistance of uh, Filipino guerrillas, we enjoy today a legacy of freedom and democracy. As the government seeks to uh, embed the country's liberty within its own heroic past, freedom is less a consequence of the American presence than it is the inevitable outcome of the Philippines' own historical struggle for self-rule. Hence today, as we commemorate this uh, victorious day for the liberation of the Philippines, we also celebrate the strong brotherhood forged between the Filipino and American soldiers who fought shoulder to shoulder during the war. Above all, we express our deep respect and admiration to our beloved veterans who fought for the freedom we enjoy today. As much as we are blessed with this privilege to live through their sacrifices, we also carry the great responsibility of continuing their legacy, the legacy of love and loyalty to the country and selfless service for our fellow Filipinos. Let it be our mission to continue their legacy by serving the country and putting the needs of our fellow citizens above our own. Muli, mabuhay ang mga veterano, mabuhay ang mga Pilipino. God bless us all. Thank you very much, Yusek Carolina. Now here is an audiovisual presentation of the retaking of the Corridor Island 77 years ago. Let us all watch.
This time, you will have the National Commander of the Defenders of Bataan and Corregidor, Mr. Rafael G. Estrada, for his message. The liberation of Corregidor by combined paratroop and amphibious assault on February 16, 1945, was extremely vital to both Americans and Filipinos. This symbol of determined resistance against the Japanese onslaught in 1942 had fallen into Japanese hands. And as long as it was not secured, posed a major problem to the Americans hoping to utilize the port facilities of Manila. Corridor had always occupied a strategic position controlling the entrance to Manila Bay and through this, Manila proper. In 1945, Manila Bay and Manila itself were key to the U.S. offensive against Japan. Since Manila and the immediate environs could be developed as major staging areas for the invasion of mainland Japan. But until Corridor was taken, Manila and Manila Bay could not be utilized. Corridor had to be taken to open up the bay. The conquest of Corridor was also vital to the lives of Filipinos. As long as Corridor blocked the entry of American ships into Manila proper, all supplies for the city had to come via long land routes from the Lingayen Gulf area. Once Corridor was taken, food and relief supp supplies for Manila's sustenance could come in. Thus, Corridor had to be taken as soon as possible. The combined paratroop and amphibious assault took place, in fact, even as the Battle of Manila was going on fiercely. It was not a simple task. Although the Japanese were unable to rehabilitate the large-scale American coastal artillery guns, they were able to emplace some of their own naval guns with much ammunition. Suicide boats known as Shinyo were hidden in caves by the waterline, ready to attack American ships. And the Japanese had laid mines in the channels between Corridor and Bataan, and on the south towards Cavite. All three did cause casualties. The land fighting would last for 10 days. After Corridor was secured, the other satellite harbor ports, Fort Hughes, the Carabao Island, the Caballo Island, Fort Drum, El Fraile Island, and Fort Frank, the Carabao Island, had to be wrested from the Japanese as, as well. Manila Bay was officially opened to maritime traffic on March 1, 1945. Weapons, military equipment, and supplies to support the Philippine campaign and beyond began to pour, pour in. So did the, the life-giving relief supplies so vital to the residents of Manila. This opening of Manila Bay was made possible by the daring assault on Corridor. Thank you. Next to offer his message is the President of the Filipino-American Memorial Endowment, Lieutenant Colonel Artemio Matibag. Honorable Secretary Delpin Lorenzana of the Department of National Defense, Honorable Secretary Bernadette Romulo Puyat of the Department of Tourism, Honorable Undersecretary Reynaldo Mapagu of the Department of National Defense, Honorable Administrator General Ernesto Carolina of the Philippine Veterans Affairs Office, Honorable Antonio Bautista, Assistant Secretary of the Department of National Defense, Honorable Mark Lapid, Chief Operating Officer of the Tourism Infrastructure 
Enterprise Zone Authority, Honorable Colonel Aguirico Amagna, Chief Veterans Memorial and Historical Division, PBAU, Distinguished Guest, Ladies and Gentlemen, Good morning and thank you in, for inviting me in this special occasion. On behalf of the Filipino American Memorial Endowment, I join you all today on the 77th anniversary of the retaking or liberation of Corregidor. Today, we commemorate the heroic sacrifice of the liberators of Corregidor Island led by General Jones of the 503rd Regimental Combat Team of the United States Army, which historians describe as one of the most difficult yet courageous combat attack, having to parachute down to a very small land clearing on the island's golf course at topside, considering the daily prevailing high winds in the island. With minimum casualties, on that first day on February 16, 1945, the Liberators completed the liberation of Corregidor for two weeks. Thus, we simultaneously celebrate this day, March 2, the victorious return of General Douglas MacArthur on Corregidor to lead the paragrazing ceremony in that famous U.S. Army flagpole at topside portion of the island which can be seen as is until now. Corregidor's bloody combat battles from its invasion by the Japanese Imperial forces to its liberation by the U.S. Army are permanently etched in the annals of World War II history. We can still feel the ferocity of the fighting in the island as evident by all the building ruins and the silent big guns hovered perhaps by the memories or spirits of the fallen or those who gave their ultimate sacrifice. Corridor today is the only World War II battlefield in the world, remaining in the as is and in place condition since its liberation. We must pray tribute to our Corridor heroes, not only by commemorating their deeds, but also to maintain the island as a national shrine, and carefully considering it and declaring it as a national park to balance its development as a friendly, tourist, historical, or pilgrimage destination without desecrating its environment. It is my fervent hope that the government, through the Department of Defense and the Department of Tourism, will act swiftly and decisively at this time to address the need for continuing preservation of the Corridor's World War II barracks ruins, big and small artillery guns, and war artifacts, either by engineering intervention or other modern techniques, as well as to partner with the resourceful private sector in infrastructure development and availability. This in order to ensure Corregidor's enduring sustainability for our future generations. In a similar way, we at the Filipino American Memorial Endowment Working under the auspices of the American Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines, or AMCHAM, will fully cooperate and support all your endeavors as we faithfully subscribe with our mission to help preserve and maintain tangible reminders of the shared values for which Americans, Filipinos, and their allies fought side by side during the World War II. We are doing this currently by installing the 138 Bataan Death March markers spanning the three provinces of Bataan, Pampanga, and Tarlac and continuously 
maintaining them in the last 21 years. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again and mabuhay. Also here to give his message is the Chief Operating Officer of the Tourism Infrastructure and Enterprise Zone Authority, Mr. Mark D. Lapid. My warmest greetings to our veterans, modern-day defenders, international partners, stakeholders, and the Filipino people. It has been over seven decades since the Corregidor Island has become the symbol of strength and valor of the Allied Filipino and American forces. Today, we rededicate ourselves to the memory of the ultimate sacrifices of the Filipino defenders. The Tourism Infrastructure and Enterprise Zone Authority recognizes the value of Corregidor Island as the lasting testimonial of the dedication to the ideals of freedom and selflessness of our forefathers. As we start the course toward the recovery of the tourism industry amid the challenges of COVID-19, we at Tiaza reiterate our commitment to the newly designated Corregidor Flagship Tourism Enterprise Zone. We are glad to share that the Comprehensive Tourism Master Plan for the Redevelopment of Corregidor Island has been approved by the Tiazo Board of Directors and its stakeholders. The development plan's major purposes are to assure the preservation of the historical value of the National Shrine and to establish more resilient and inclusive tourism development by bringing investments and opening more activities related to the context of the country's story of heroism. We want to thank the Department of National Defense, Philippine Veterans Affairs Office, and the local government of Cavite for your active engagement, guidance, and support throughout the process of the strategic plan's development. Together with the stakeholders of the National Shrine, the PVAO, the Department of Tourism, we will revitalize the tourism on the island and show the importance of our history to the international community. Mabuhay ang ating mga veterano. This time, let us all welcome the Secretary of the Department of Tourism, Secretary Bernadette Romulo Puyat, for her inspirational message. Good day to you all and thank you for being here today. As we commemorate the 77th anniversary of the retaking of Corregidor Island today, the last Pacific outpost to fall during World War II, I'd like to give a brief tribute to the nurses who valiantly carried on with their duties. They tended to thousands of wounded soldiers despite the ongoing barrage of bombs over the Malinta Tunnel where they created a makeshift hospital, which one army nurse had described as ghastly with its hot, dirty, and airless conditions, and triple-decker beds. The everyday heroism of these wartime nurses does not get as much attention in the stories told about the war. But even more marginalized from the narratives are the number of Filipino nurses who worked side-by-side side with their American counterparts. In a riveting account by Lieutenant Colonel Michelle Manning about these angels of mercy, she describes how, after the fall of Bataan, the group of American and Filipino nurses stationed at the hospitals were evacuated to Corregidor and absorbed into the nursing staff of the tunnel hospital. She noted that along with the 85 military nurses there, there were several Filipino nurses who, in addition to treating battle injuries, would treat patients with severe infections, malaria, and diarrhea. In August 1945, right after the war, Chief Army Nurse Josephine Nesbitt made a list of the names of the 30 Filipino nurses who served at the Army hospitals in Bataan and Corredor with the aim of getting these women officially recognized by General MacArthur. She wrote, They were heroines as much as the rest of us, 
And I feel they are deserving of any consideration we can get for them. They were as loyal as they could be to us while we were interned in Santo Tomas. They sent us toilet articles, money, and fruits whenever they could get those things into us. And as soon as they could come into camp after we were released, they were right there to rejoice with us. When I read these words, I could immediately see and feel the love and dedication of the Filipino nurse, caregiver, healthcare worker, and doctor. In our nearly two-year-long battle with COVID-19, we have seen our frontliners go above and beyond, working extended shifts and getting very little sleep as they deal with overwhelmed and under-equipped hospitals, often unable to see their families for long periods of time. Their sacrifices should indeed be recognized for their great contribution to supporting medical systems around the world. Fortunately, as vaccination rates begin to rise, the healthcare system has been less burdened with cases of severe illness. Vaccination in these times can be seen as a liberating force that unshackles us from the prison of the pandemic. We are beginning to take back our lives. To the veterans of the Pacific War, we salute you for your service and sacrifice. To their descendants, may you carry forward the flame of peace. Thank you very much for joining us in today's commemoration ceremony. Mabuhay. Lastly, we also have with us this morning is the Minister, Counselor, and Deputy Chief of Missions of the U.S. Embassy in the Philippines, Minister Heather Catherine Variava, for her inspirational message. It is a privilege to join our World War II veterans and family members to honor the legacy and sacrifices of the heroes who fought for the liberation of the Philippines. I remember my grandfather, who served in the U.S. Navy on the west coast of the United States during World War II, as well as my great uncle, who was an electrician on a U.S. Navy repair ship in the Pacific. Thank you for the opportunity to represent the United States alongside DOT Secretary Bernadette Romulo Puyat, DND Undersecretary Ernesto Carolina, Defenders of Bataan and Corregidor National Commander Mr. Rafael Estrada, Filipino American Memorial Endowment President Lieutenant Colonel Artemio Matibag, and Tieza CEO Mark Lapid. 77 years ago, the retaking of Corregidor and the raising of the U.S. flag marked a key moment in the liberation of the Philippines. Thousands of Filipinos and Americans risked their lives fighting side by side for freedom and one of their enduring legacies is the unbreakable bond between our two countries. This year, our commemoration of the events of 1945 looks different than in years past. We are not standing on the rock in front of the old Corregidor flagpole, but instead joining one another virtually. I'm speaking to you from the U.S. Embassy next to Manila Bay, where our own flagpole, like the one at Corregidor, bears the marks of the battle it witnessed. We cherish these opportunities that keep alive the memories of those who served. As we mark their sacrifice, we uphold our shared commitment to freedom and democracy. Immediately after the war, Filipinos and Americans joined together to begin rebuilding. One of their priorities was the preservation of knowledge and they promised that education would provide the youth of the Philippines a brighter future. This commitment to education developed into programs and institutions that continue to shape our relationship today. It established the Fulbright Program of the Philippines, which has the proud distinction of being the oldest continually running Fulbright Commission in the world. It includes the library the U.S. Embassy opened on Taft Avenue in 1946, which is now our American center and part of a network of 15 American corners across the Philippines. 
This year, the United States and the Philippines mark the 75th anniversary of our diplomatic relationship. As friends, partners, and allies, the story of our cooperation through the decades makes us proud, and we owe so much of our successes to those who fought at Corregidor. Our countries have accomplished great things together, and I am optimistic that in 2022, we will accomplish even more, thanks to the friendship, cooperation, and mutual support between Americans and Filipinos. Filipinos and Americans together endured the challenges of World War II, and we rebuilt after the war, growing ever closer as we did so. We honor the memory and legacy of the veterans of Corregidor as we seize this opportunity to strengthen our partnership and thrive as friends, partners, and allies. And that concludes our virtual commemoration of the 77th anniversary of the retaking of the Corregidor Island. I am Felice Lois Lania. Thank you very much for joining us this morning and stay safe everyone.